The 21st century has witnessed the quick rise of China as a global superpower, challenging the long-standing dominance of the U.S. on the world stage. This ascent has not been without its share of conflict. Intellectual property disputes have further strained ties, with accusations of China stealing works from American companies and institutions. But perhaps the most sensitive of all issues is the human rights debate, with the U.S. frequently criticizing China's stance on matters like Hong Kong. Especially with the introduction of the Natural Security Law in 2020, the U.S. voiced concerns and criticized China for what it saw as a violation of Hong Kong's freedoms, causing tensions between the U.S. and China. I, th I think really strong and fair intellectual property rights are critical, both in our country and China and everywhere else, because otherwise it's hard to operate. Because you want to incentivize people to do the R&D, to create this intellectual property. But if it's easy for people to steal, or confiscate or misappropriate, then nobody's going to want to do R&D in that country. Really, I think the government should stay out of these, these companies. They, sh they should be privately run, privately owned. They should be maximized. They should be focused on maximizing the profit of their company and not so much on advancing the government agenda. But you, you can also see cases here in the United States. We also have something similar where, you know, before Elon Musk bought Twitter or now X, I had no idea, but you look at the Twitter files, you know, the government did a lot of censorship. They did a lot of things trying to craft or shape the, the perception in our country. So, so that, that, although that's more internally focused, I'm sure China's a lot of that too. But in general, I don't think whether it's China or the United States, I don't think either country should be doing that kind of stuff. Then there's Taiwan. The U.S.'s support for Taiwan through the Taiwan Relations Act, coupled with China's unwavering One China policy, remains a significant point of disagreement, with both nations treading a delicate diplomatic line. Beyond politics, the realm of popular culture has seen a fascinating exchange between the U.S. and China. Chinese cinema, once limited to specific audiences in the U.S., has now found mainstream success with films like The Wandering Earth. American celebrities are not far behind in this cultural exchange. From promoting Chinese brands to collaborating with Chinese artists, Hollywood's A-listers are finding an increasing fan base in China. And of course, there is the global phenomenon that is TikTok, the Chinese origin platform that has revolutionized social media and significantly impacted American youth culture. In the bustling world of business, Chinese companies have made significant inroads into the U.S. market. Brands like Shein and Timu have become popular on social media, reshaping the American retail landscape. The rise of fast fashion driven by these e-commerce giants has introduced American consumers to a new era of affordable and trendy clothing. But it's not just about fashion. The sheer scale and efficiency of Chinese e-commerce platforms have posed challenges for U.S. businesses, urging a blend of Eastern efficiency and Western style. You know, Palto historically has been a place of innovation. Now, whether it's a company that's uh, based here in the United States or a company based in China, I think it's less important. I think it's more important that we have the best and brightest working on these kind of these kind of problems. It's unfortunate that that we've kind of evolved from being you know, relatively close partners to being more adversaries. I think it's very unfortunate because I think everyone benefits when this exchange of ideas, when when and especially Palo Alto, we benefit when people locate their R and D centers in our, in our city. And today we have some of the highest commercial office vacancy ever. And so it's not a good thing, for sure. The technological arena is perhaps where the U.S.-China rivalry is most evident. Dominating American tech companies like Google and Facebook find their match in Chinese counterparts such as Baidu and WeChat. The race for technological dominance is fierce, with both nations pushing the boundaries of innovation. But in general, I think competition is really good. I think in general, consumers or whoever the customers are benefit. And so it's generally a good thing. When there's lack of competition, you see, like in industries where there's not much competition, you see kind of stagnate. The technology doesn't, doesn't increase. So when there's competition from China or from somewhere else, I think in general it's a good thing. But I, I just, it's also important that it's, it's kind of like a fair competition, right? For instance, if one government subsidizes the heck out of, out of a certain industry, it's at the detriment of another countries. So, you know, I think intense competition with a level of playing field is actually a good, good thing. Chinese tech companies, once seen as mere imitators, are now at the forefront of global tech trends. From 5G technology to AI-driven solutions, China's tech landscape is shaping the future. However, this rise has not been without controversies. 
what I hope is that we go back to the mode, which is we compete heavily or, or vigorously on a business level, right? On a business level, each company is just fighting to be the best on a level playing field. And we used to have a lot more Chinese grad students here. I think that's a good thing. We were the best and brightest came to our country. I think we want that. We kind of made it hard for, 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 for like smart Chinese, hard, smart, hardworking Chinese people to come to our country. And that, that's, to me, that's kind of crazy. Like you, you, we want the best and brightest here. Not only do we not want to, we want to make it easy for them to come here, but in some ways we want to make it like if they come here, and especially if they get a advanced degree, we kind of make them want to make them stay here. Right? Like, hey, you're gonna have to work it off, right? You can't just take a great education and go back to China. You have to stay here. And I think a lot of them would prefer that. But, you know, like we make it hard to get in now. We make it hard to stay here. And it's just crazy. I mean, our country is a country of immigrants. If you look at Elon Musk, look at Larry Page, look at all these amazing entrepreneurs. A lot of them are foreign born. But I do worry for the Asian Americans here, if it does become more adversarial with China, it didn't take too much for the Japanese Americans to get rounded up and get put into concentration camps during World War II. My family like lost everything. Right? They had a fire cell. Like you had to sell everything in just a few days, right? And you can see that happening again, especially because Asian Americans really lack a lot of political power in our country. We don't have much of a voice here. The U.S.-China relationship, as we've seen, is not just about politics or economics. It's a complicated tie that spans culture, business, technology, and more. In this ever-evolving narrative, one thing remains clear: the importance of mutual respect and understanding. And that wraps up our deep dive into the U.S.-China relationship. If you found this insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content like this.